The second half of Cruz's article is really useful, I think, for us because what it does is it returns to this idea, which is so important to Gertzen, about what it is that is so upsetting about zombies, and it elaborates on it in some really useful ways. So this isn't to say that Sigurdsson's wrong, but remember the idea there that the zombie is upsetting because what it represents is an uncontrolled uh, urge, the urge to just consume represented with complete disregard for the safety of the consumer, right? So I'm just going to eat mindlessly. It doesn't matter if I put my own body in danger uh, or if I put anybody else in danger, I'm just going to do what I do. And that's fundamentally upsetting. Most people would probably agree that that's true, okay? Um, there might be other ways to interpret it, other ways to elaborate on it. Most people would agree that that's true. But one of the things that Cruz does, which I think is so important, is he returns us to this, this fundamental notion that, well, while that might be true, there's something even more terrifying going on here, and that is, that, and we shouldn't overlook the fact, even though it's going to seem so obvious, that the zombie is dead. Uh, the zombie represents a dead body. Now, there's all kinds of psychological complications that come with that, how an individual would, would react to a dead body that is presumably animated. But as Cruz is very good to point out, you know, that's all fantasy because that doesn't really exist anywhere in nature. The dead do not return. In fact, that's what death means, right? So it's not a fear that is grounded in a rational understanding of the world. But what he says is that if you think about the dead and how animals react to the dead, we have a good general idea or a good general sense of some of the fundamental things that are so upsetting about zombies. So at the end of this, at the end of this article, he starts talking about how animals react to other dead animals. And he gives all kinds of interesting observations there. The one that sticks out the most to me is this idea that when there's a body around, there are chemical signifiers that death has occurred and that that causes other animals to avoid the corpse because the chemicals indicate a state of decay, and if a body has decayed, then there's likely a predator somewhere nearby, right? And so you want to avoid that smell because you will want to avoid the predator if you're an animal always, okay? Of course, one of the things that the zombie does, which is again fantasy, is this terror of there being the stench of decay, but the sense of decay, the stench of decay, and the source of the decay is also the potential predator. So that makes it even more terrifying. But one of the things we have here is this sense that, um, well, let's look on 166 here. Um, uh, um, in the, col the column here, all the way on the right, what we have here is uh, first full paragraph starting uh, down that column. Physically, zombies are truly horrifying creatures. Romero has taken his creatures to various states of decay, and we've seen that, with flesh stripping away and appendages falling off. The zombies in Lucio, Full Sea Zombie 2, are utterly decomposed with half-eaten and worm-infested faces. There are those who cannot stomach the mere appearance of the cinematic zombie, for there is a natural human repulsion to corpses, the state of death, which is why human creatures excuse me, human cultures almost universally have ways of isolating the dead from the living. It goes on to talk a little bit about how that happens in the animal kingdom as well. But again, that's one of the scary things about zombies is that they are kind of the uncontrollable um, um, horror. They are, we recognize what should be avoided, but they are unavoidable because they are in pursuit of the living. So that too is upsetting. When we think about then why the zombie is horrifying, one of the things we might recognize is there are potentially a number of reasons for why the zombie is an upsetting creature. And artistically, it falls to the artist who is making the film, writing the novel, creating what other zombie type of uh, artwork he or she wants to pick and choose potentially from the sources of horror and to use those to engage the audience. We can see this, I think, most evidently in the in the kind of the cutesy zombies that have flooded popular culture as well. We have zombies in kids shows, we have zombie dolls, we have zombie toys, and these are very different, obviously, than the rage monsters in 28 Days Later, The Walking Dead and Night of the Living Dead, or even what we see in very early films like Revolt of the Zombies and 
um, white zombie. Um, I can't imagine any of those being turned into toys now that I say that, but there's the sense that the zombie can be scary, the zombie can be made not so scary, and there's any number of combinations in between. So when we think about the films that we're watching and the kind of zombies that we're encountering, we might notice that the horror of the zombie is itself that's something that's very much up for debate. Why is it that this particular zombie is scary? And it's not that we're trying to drive towards some absolute reason, it's that we might say there's a number of reasons. It certainly could simply be the aversion to death. It could be the cultural implications, particularly the race, the implications for race in society, as we get in our earliest films. It could be the implications for how the body acts, unfettered consumption, uh, a mindless pursuit of the living, the complete destruction that they bring about in an area, or the simple, graphic, grotesque opportunity for representing the dead. There's a bunch of different reasons, and I haven't mentioned them all, but as we get further into this course, one of the things that I want us to start thinking about isn't so much that there's one or two reasons why a zombie is horrifying, potentially. It could also be terrifying, but for right now we're thinking about horror. It's in fact that there are a number of reasons for why the zombie could be horrifying, and then as we think about how and why and if a zombie is horrifying, we can begin to have good discussions. For example, it's fascinating to me that the zombie boom, which again starts around 2004, right around the time of 28 Days Later, but really once we get to uh, the, uh, a couple of significant remakes, Zack Snyder's remake of the Romero film in 2004, and then it kind of takes off as we get further and further in uh, in time coming towards the contemporary period, the present day, the zombie boom has coincided with the zombies association with violence, with intense violence. Now it's not that the social and racial and ethnic concerns that have been so important to early zombie films have faded away, um, but it is the case that in many of the most popular zombie films, okay, and zombie television shows, as we'll see with Walking Dead, the popularity of the zombie eventually has been based on the violence that's associated with the zombie. So the zombie itself is disturbing, upsetting, horrifying because of the physical mayhem that it causes. And as we've seen in a lot of films this semester, the zombie has not always been scary because of the physical mayhem that it causes. And we're going to get a really good sense of just how um, uh, transient, fluid, impermanent that trend may be when we watch iZombie at the end of this course in which we start to have a very different kind of zombie represented. A zombie who is very much a conscious entity. In fact, whose whole identity is based on the fact that she has a mind that transforms over time. And while there is violence associated with the zombie and iZombie, it is nowhere near the same amount of violence or the same kind of violence that we see in films or television shows such as The Walking Dead or any of the Night of the Living Dead remakes that we've seen over time or a number of other films. So once we start to think about what the zombie starts to look like in the early 21st century, what we might simply notice is that violence is a big part of the zombie and what's so horrifying about the zombie kind of massive large-scale violence if you've seen the film version of World War Z which I haven't included in this course because I don't think it's a particularly good film it's a great book it's a fun book by Max Brooks um, but it's not a particularly good film I know that's a weird thing to say in this course because virtually every film we've watched has not been a good film but what I mean by it is that it's not a good film in ways that you know, nothing about it helps us further our understanding of zombies in ways that other movies we might watch already do. So that's one of the reasons why I didn't select it. But if we come back to this idea that in the period you and I are living in right now, okay, and I think this will become more and more evident as we get through uh, a few more films here in the last week or so of the course, the, the, the horror of the zombie is almost always strongly associated with physical violence against the body. Physical violence could be against the body of the zombie, could be physical violence against the person or people who are assaulted by the zombies, but it's that, it, it's that, um, uh, it's that representation or it's representations of the destruction of the body, 
sometimes the partial destruction, sometimes the complete destruction, the graphic representation of that, that give the zombie its, its edge. Now, that would seem to say, that would seem to imply that the zombie in the contemporary period is very much a vehicle for horror and not terror. And I would, not just because I'm saying it right now, but I would be pretty inclined to agree with that statement. We don't see very many zombie films at present that rely on this concept of terror, uh, that rely on the sense that they might show me something significant um, that I don't want to see. In fact, what the zombie films seem to be doing again and again is kind of showing us the horrifying thing and then kind of, and kind of moving on. So one question we might have of contemporary zombie films as we get into this last week of the course is, where's the terror? Is it ever the case that my expectations are raised in the sense that I'm going to be shown something awful and then I am not, that something else happens? Um, or is it almost always the case that I get exactly what I deserve for sitting down with the zombie film, which is grotesquery after grotesquery after grotesquery, right? Which is what you get in a film like, in a series like The Walking Dead, which I'll stop talking about now because we haven't watched it as a class yet. I'm assuming you're familiar with it if you're in this course, but if you're not, it's fine. But when we think about a film like 28 Days Later, right, one of the things you get consistently is, is horror. Um, if there's a possibility of something going wrong, it almost always goes wrong, right? It's very rarely the case in that film that terror is raised um, um, and then avoided. I guess you could look at the last sequence, the escape from the military facility, as, as, an, as an instance of terror where the concern is that they will be trapped there and destroyed there, but they indeed get out and they escape from the facility. Um, that might be a good representation of terror, but certainly there's a great deal of horror in that film, right? Um, continually shown things that are upsetting, continually shown things that are disturbing, um, and then the film kind of moves on. So, as we think about body horror, what we might recognize is that the very violent movies, zombie movies and other movies, but the very violent zombie movies that are everywhere right now, zombie television shows, everywhere right now um, are very much indebted to the emergence of body horror in the early 1980s, primarily through science fiction films, as discussed last time. But this dawning awareness, this dawning interest in representing a, a disregard for the human body, kind of graphically. There's all kinds of interesting social forces kind of going on here, okay? Um, in the in the 70s, in the 80s, all kinds of you know cultural arguments about the body and who has the right to the body, and all kinds of questions about you know end of life issues and all kinds of other social transformations that are I think probably pretty significant to the experience of body horror uh, in culture. We're not going to get into a lot of those in this class, although they would be a fascinating topic to discuss in more detail elsewhere. But in terms of this course, I think what we just want to be aware of is that. The obsession with violence in the films you're starting to see now, 28 Days Later, even in something like Shaun of the Dead, which, while a very funny movie, has some very violent moments in it, um, comes from largely the early 1980s. Now, when I say that, I don't want anyone to think, no, 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 there's, there's early violent films before that. Of course there are. Of course there are. There are, absolutely. But we have this period of kind of intense production or an uptick in production of violent films um, that deal with uh, violations, deformations, destruction, mutations of the bodies, the 1980s, Night of the Living Dead being, well, the Living Dead series being significant here in a moment, but I'm thinking of things like Friday the 13th, I'm thinking of things like Nightmare on Elm Street, films that, you know, the Halloween series, films that make their money on their graphic destruction of the body, kind of repeatedly. Zombies, Soak that up. Now, why is that important? Because we've seen throughout this course in period after period after period that the zombie is like the tofu of monsters, right? The zombie is used to kind of soak up the social concerns, the artistic trends of any given period and represent them. And that's one of the reasons why the zombie looks so different from decade to decade, right? I would, I would bet, I would bet that the zombie 20 or 30 years from now, might still be around. I bet it's probably not going to be associated 
with the same levels of violence as it is today. I would assume it's going to be associated with something different. Just like in the 30s, it was associated with racism and colonialism. Just like in the you know 40s and 50s, it was associated with concerns of the atom bomb and concerns of um, you know crime. Just like it was in the you know 60s, uh, in, in 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 other ways, also associated with kind of apocalyptic themes. But we see this transformation. It's not the sense that it's linear and never regresses, but we see these transformations for the zombies over time. We are in a period of intensely violent films, intensely violent television shows, but the history of the zombies suggests just wait, and you will see that change over time as other trends become significant to the genre horror, uh, to the horror genre, excuse me, um, or to maybe even terror. That seems to be another completely plausible way for the zombie story to go. So I hope you enjoyed the second half of Cruz's article, okay, because he talks about some really interesting things, um, and he talks about them in a ways, I think, that can build on the other essays we've already watched this semester and help us understand the zombie in, in new and different ways, both in the past, in the present, and how it might look going into the future.